All right, everybody. How we doing there this Monday, wonderful Monday morning? Hey, Matt D. Hey, Lane Staley. Hey, Brian Harmon. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. Hey, Mega Meg, Mega Anaconda 969. Ah, I think I finally got it. That's right. Hope you all are ready. Ready to look at a new monitor today. We're going to look at um, this lovely Sony PVM right here that's a 14L2. And uh, we've got a cap kit put together, at least a list to start from. Uh, but that's it's, it's in good working order as you see it right now. Now, before I get started, uh, I'm going to tell you just a couple stories from the weekend. Because uh, if you're here live, it is Monday, right at high noon in the Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining me. A livre nos do mal. Hey, self-elected. Hello, Grails Hobbies. Yo. Now look, just in case you're here and you're not a subscriber, I did switch over to subscriber-only mode. Okay? So if you can't interact in the chat, it's because you're not subscribed. And I only put it on a one minute delay. So if you go and click subscribe, 60 seconds later, you can come and interact with us in the chat. But that should help keep any nonsense out because I don't really have a lot of time to monitor the chat when someone comes in and causes some mischief. So we'll preemptively attack them on that. Okay, so... Stories, stories from the weekend. Let's see, where do we start? So first off, let's even do a post weekend thing. So this was from my plans for this week. Uh, I had a client send in their Sony BVM D20 F1 U, which is one of the highest level BVM four by three CRTs ever made. It does 240p all the way up to 1080i and it, uh, it's a great monitor, but the problem is the client sent it in to get a full refurbished res restoration, which is a lot of work. And the problem was I hooked it up once I got it delivered from U-Ship. They did a great job, the shipper did, but it got here. I hooked it up, and I right when I turned it on, I had a bad feeling about it uh, right at the beginning. And it was just... A flashing strobing green and red colors on the tube and I was like oh brother so hey James Boone and Andre thank you for showing up today yeah so back to this d20 uh, the tubes flashing so the first thing I do is I click on the hours counter so you can just go into the status under the menu it's two of three so you just scroll down and it'll tell you a readout on the hours and this one man it had tons of hours it had almost a hundred and forty thousand hours on the counter so immediately I was suspicious of that tube especially the symptoms it was showing and since uh it had that many hours on it. I opened it up. I looked inside and I could see and tell that it's, it's like a 96% chance. It's the original tube inside the CRT with 140,000 hours on it. And so there's no hope for this tube. Like it's got, I can just tell by turning it on and watching it for a second. It's got multiple shorts on it. So that stinks for the client. But the good thing is, is he sent it to me and I know that costs him a lot of money to send it to me, but I didn't go ahead and do a full restoration on everything and then tell him, Hey, I think I can get it to work because I can look at like some of these things right now, like right away and tell if something's, um, if something's trouble. And a lot of times I'm starting to learn what to look for uh, as far as bad tubes and, and things like that. So that is actually going to be, I think, the next big real production 
uh, for the channel. So the last one was the Toshiba set review. Uh, and the next one will be this special on dead BVMs and dead BVM tubes. Because, man, it would be just heartbreaking to spend all these kind of money and, and realize that the thing's dead. And uh, anyway, I said, I have no idea what to do with this except reach out to Save on Pat. Uh, like four years ago, he had a couple of brand new tubes for 20-inch BVMs. And even back then, they were in the thousands of dollars for these tubes. So I said, hey. I talk to Pat quite often. I'll shoot him an email and ask him. And he's like, the client's like, oh, I'll be willing to spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars for sure. And I sent a message to Pat. And <laughs> you got to love Save on Pat. So this is the legend, Save on Pat. He's the one I sent the request for. I said, hey, do you have any tubes? I know it's a long shot. I got a client that wanted me to ask, do you have any CRT tubes uh, for a, a BVM available? And God bless him. He sent me a message back uh, that he said, Steve, uh, I, I haven't had any of those things. He's like, he said, you'd have a better luck finding chicken teeth. <laughs> than uh, finding a new BVM tube. <laughs> so that like reaction kind of cut me off basis for a second because I had to think. I was like, what does that mean? Oh my, of course, a chicken doesn't have teeth, so you're never going to find a chicken's teeth. So it took me a second to catch that what I would consider. I don't know what you consider that. That's like... Uh, post-world war ii humor or something <laughs> just kidding so anyway um that was a fun little conversation i had today with pat and that changed up my plans completely because what i wanted to do originally was service that bvm um bvm d series i wanted to service those cards one at a time in here on the bench but i'm not doing that now because again it's pointless um it's pointless to Put all that labor into it so that means we're working on this one the pvm 14l2 um so we'll get started on that in a second i'm just let it play here for a minute letting the chat get going uh hey grails hobbies blay low channel bobby c how are you how all are you <laughs> how are all of you doing today thanks for coming in and uh, yeah, guys, if you're if you're coming in, uh, do hit the like button if you like the live streams. It will help YouTube send out some notifications to other subscribers that the live stream is going on, and maybe some more people will come and hang out. But otherwise, we're good. Um, yeah. So one more little story while things get warmed up here. Um, I live in a, uh, what you'd say, half college town and a half farm town. So there's a lot of farms in this area. There's a lot of food produced in this area. A lot of food produced in America comes from this area. And it has for a long time. It's been considered the breadbasket of America, the Shenandoah Valley. Um, so that leaves an interesting dynamic sometimes like the city I live in has changed a lot over the last, I don't know, 25, 30 years, of course, like any city has, but again, so it's got in the city, a big school, um, historic downtown area. And then as you go outside of that, there's a lot of farms everywhere. Uh, but that's just to give you like a snapshot of the area. This, cause this, I don't want you to be confused and think this is like New York city, San Francisco, uh, or any big town really. Um, besides that can't colleges around here, there's not much else. And so it would be farm community if it weren't for that. So, uh, I had an interaction this weekend. I went to the local grocery store and the one closest to me is a supermarket called food lion. So if you've ever heard of Food Lion, shout out in the chat. 
for anybody who shopped at the Food Lion. So just a normal, not anything's fancy. Definitely not. This is more of middle, lower income style grocery store. And I go in there, I get a couple of items from produce because it's so close to my house. I get a lot of things there, short term notice. Uh, but I went to the checkout line and this, the thing I like about this grocery store, it's the only one I go to anymore that doesn't have a self checkout. So there's no way to check yourself out like a person scanning yourself. I hate doing that newsflash. Like I'm terrible at it. I hate doing it. I don't like the responsibility of it. So to me, it's actually more old school for me to go in there and still have a cashier. So uh, that's maybe the one thing that's big difference about this as compared to like Matt D was asking Kroger's. Kroger's does still have uh, cashiers, but they also, everyone I've been to has a self-checkout. These have no self-checkouts at all. So that's that's interesting. But anyway, I, I get my stuff. I'm in the checkout line. The guy in front of me um, is like acting real goofy, like swinging around, doing stuff. I look over and he's got a vitamin water, right? Just a normal drink. And he's giving it to the cashier. And the cashier is probably, I don't know. 25 to 30 age range, male, young man, seems well-spoken. So he's sitting there checking out this guy, you know, and he's like, so yeah, it's Saturday night. Or it's not Saturday night. It's like Saturday, 5 p.m. <laughs> so he's like, hey, how you doing tonight? This is the cashier talking. How are you doing tonight? How's it going to Saturday? And the guy goes, man, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I just did a little meth right before I came in here. <laughs> and so I, I heard him say this, right? And so the first thing I did was take a step back about a foot, right? And uh, I'm starting to look him up and down. And I realize he's like filthy. Like he's wearing all black, okay? Hood, sweatshirt, full long black, black pants, black shoes and it's just like he's been rolling around in asphalt or something and uh he so after he says that i just look at the cashier and i'm like oh my gosh you know and again i step back and he's like oh okay man cool whatever dude you know and then he's like yeah yeah man you like to party and uh would you like to come party and i'm like what the f and the guy's like, no, nah, man, I'm good. Uh, he's like, you don't do anything? And I, I swear he's doing this with this guy. And he's like, no, nah, man, I'm good. But you do whatever you want to do. That's what the, <laughs> the cashier said. And then the guy turns around and looks at me. And, uh, and he looks at me and asks me if I want to party. And I didn't say a dang word to him. I sat there stone-faced like that and just stared at him and after it was long enough for him to get uncomfortable uh he he just turned around and said oh i'm just kidding uh i was just joking and scurried off through the parking lot and i just looked at the cashier after him i was like man that's crazy i was like you know hey Saturday night, I guess the weirdos are out tonight. And he started laughing and saying, oh, you know, I'm used to it. And I was like, dang, it's got to be crazy now being just a cashier in a grocery store. Uh, and so, yeah, that that all happened. Um, other interesting facts. Yeah, I was wondering what kind of party I was missing out on. But so <laughs> I will give the guy the benefit of the doubt. And one thing I was wearing my. Um, my purple windbreaker. So I probably looked like a crazy meth head. I was wearing literally a, a track suit, like a 90s trapper keeper track suit into this grocery store because it's right down the street. So I'm sure I looked like I wanted to party, you know? It, so anyway, he took off. I did not get his number. I let him go. Like I said, I didn't want to get too close, man. I had kids in the house. I don't want them being exposed 
to vapors. They're exposed to enough being around CRTs. And uh, so that was a fun interaction. I had never seen that. Doesn't really happen. Didn't happen normally in this town, but hey, things are changing all over. So he did buy a water, a vitamin water, and he paid with a $50 bill. And so while he was saying all these things, the poor cashier was trying to cash out the $50 bill in in cash from the from the intoxicated individuals cash and change <laughs> all right hopefully that story will get the chat nice and warmed up for for everybody coming in and just wanting to hang out i'm not going to be uh doing uh too much on the well, let me tell you what I've got for my time here. I've got about an hour and a half to work on this, and the, and I'm ready to go as far as we can go in an hour and a half. So I'm going to cut this off now, this TV, or monitor, excuse me, and then we're going to start to take it apart. I'll show you a little bit of what's different in this compared to the other ones we've worked on. It is a different build-out. It's Sony's final CRT PVM. So let's go ahead and switch around and we'll start to take this thing um, apart i have already removed the shell that's one thing definitely unplug the power Yeah, get all that out of the way. All right, so let's move the camera a little bit and do that. Turn a little more light on, and we'll swing this thing around so you can look at the back as we start to take this thing apart. So we're going to start by removing our neck board, okay? Then we should be able to disconnect cables from our sideboard, which is, in this case, our bay. So this is one of the unique features of this L2 is it has a bay, a slot bay that you can add other input cards in here to add expansion features on the monitor. So that should not need to, that should not need to be removed for us to do this servicing. We're just going to be removing the neck board and then the main chassis, and this will probably come with it, the input board. So that's what we're gonna take out first. And to get the neck board out, first thing we do, just disconnect there. There's another disconnection point here. Do not have to discharge this monitor. You don't have to discharge this to remove the neck board. But you do need a Phillips head screwdriver because there is a ring right here. Let me see if I can get closer to that ring for you. This... That plastic ring right there, you have to undo that screw right there. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that shaky. Sorry about that shaky view there for a second. Yeah, I'm sure Brutus is walking around somewhere back here. So we got to remove that uh, screw and then we can slide this neck board off. We don't remove the screw, actually. We just loosen it a little bit. Now, this piece of plastic here 
it most of the time will break. So don't be surprised if it just falls apart. It gets stuck. So, well, see this time we may just have to bonded to the tape here pretty good try to break it free a little bit there we go there we go okay Let's see if we can get it now still Ooh, there we go. That might be a first. It actually didn't fall apart. It probably will before I get done working on it. There we go. What happens is it gets hot and it binds to this masking tape right here. And after 20 years, of course, it, it almost melts together. Just get rid of these ground cables. Well, if I can with my fingers. There we go. So there we have one, one board out. And it leaves us a couple of options. Gonna let's connect to that point. Well, okay. all right, just put this with this for right now, and now we're gonna get in here. And remove this board. And we got to remove another screw to do that. And we need to remove some screws off the main board here, too. Should release that okay that's good now we just need to get our main input board out to be released free I'm sure that nothing else is going to be plugged in there's a Amazon plug so we can already move it some so we'll get ready here and discharge it in a second the ground cable. We got another ground cable right here that we should probably just remove. Remove it. Just get it out of there. Let it stay with the tube. Some things we don't want to move. But Let's see, I'm gonna have to do the other one too. This is just extra. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. There we go. All right. There we go. So we've got. What I like to do is I like to remove all the cables at the neck or this board because there's only three of them at the input board, right? Because these connect from the input board back here to the communication card up here. So you don't, um, you just do that. So you don't have to worry about disconnecting anything from this. The next thing we're concerned about are just making sure every ground is released 
Like there's one right here. There's a big ground right here I have to take the screw out of just to get it out. And what does this one connect to? This connects back to the main frame, so not, or back to the card slot, so we'll just put it back in there for now. And try to remember that we have to reconnect to that point afterwards. We'll put it back together. So, just an example of how many spots. Everything's good on this side. Okay, good there. Do this connect the yoke, of course. So that's got to be out of the way. And there's some cables up front, but before we get to those, let's go ahead and discharge this. So I'm trying to get a good angle here. Let me let me adjust the camera. And I will get it back into focus here. Sorry about that. All right, sorry about that. Let me get this camera focused up here for a second. And uh, then we will move over to, let's see, should we do some, I apologize. I probably should just see if it can run. There we go. Sorry about that. All right. So yeah, we're going to discharge this one now so we can see that. Good. And let's see if we can, what do you think? Put me, I'll probably stand right there so you can see me. Move that post. You can see two views here. Simultaneous views. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's go closer. So what I'm trying, there's Brutus back there. I'm just gonna discharge this, okay? So a good spot is this metal shielding. You wanna just clip onto there with your discharge tool, you can do that. Now, <laughs> It's gonna go right off of there. Now, when I uh, when I discharge this, I can't touch any of the metal on this frame, or it's pointless. You know, then it'll just shock me if it if it discharges at all. So I'm gonna go in here. Anybody see? We're gonna go right there. Okay. Let's go in. I don't know how close we can get. Maybe we'll go a little closer now. So if anything happens, you can see it. Uh, I doubt it will happen. It never happens on PBM, so don't get too excited because it's a rarity. But you never know. That's why we always do it. So the important thing you do is just click the metal of the anode cap as well as the ring on the tube. But you see there's nothing. Then you can push the ring. There's an anode cap. Let me show you how that works. You push that together, the metal right there, and it will release. If I can get it in there. Good. Sticking on the other side. So there we go. These older or the L series are kind of a pain, but it's just a clamp that springs together. You push it together like that, and it will, uh, and then it, it expands into the anode ring up here, which is just a tiny little cylinder right there. See that? Just a little cylinder. So you could tap that. And then on this monitor, it's not really any danger like it was on the uh, Toshiba. That one was a real bear. Okay. That's a fun little demonstration. All right. So now we can pull the board. 
Let me get everything resituated. We'll pull this board out and take a look at the circuit board so we can service it. Um, of course, we have our neck board right here. And then I'll fix the lighting up in two so we just get it all out of here so that be ready to use the overhead camera. Okay, let's kick it over there a little bit. And this should just start to slide the whole tray. I might need to lift this up. Yeah, and if we look towards the front, there's a bunch of little connections up here that you have to disconnect. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Just cable connections. Well, I don't want to come out. Sometimes they get stuck. There's not like a pin holding it. The problem is, is they'll just fly out and smack your hand. Not it. Not a lot. This one's not got too many. It's three more tables. One, two, three. Okay, that's it right there. There we go. Whole board assembly's out. All right. And that's it right there. See? So there we go. Let me get back here and look at our board. So that's how you get the 14L2 apart. And unlike the other monitors that we've worked on recently, like the PVM and M series. Those ones have a power supply on the side of them where you can see this, the uh, slot for your cards. That's where you would see a... That's where you would normally see a power supply on the older PVMs. So this was a redesign. And that means the power stuff is right here in this main board, just like the deflection. Yeah, thank you about cab. Don't forget to like here. Let me do this. You go over here to this camera. We'll get it. Looking at our first our main board where we're going to be doing a lot of work. And there we go. This is our G board. Our G board. So let me flip it around so look at it like this. You see it says G right here. Sony G board and I am not certain where the capacitors are on this kit there's our kit list um, I don't know it looks like I've done this one before and there were some alterations that needed to be made on the C board specifically um, yeah I don't know why this was a kit that may may have had some errors on it because the caps over on this are 250 volt 47 microfarads, but on the list they're different. At least the ones on the list that I got. And this was, uh, funny enough, an old Save on Pat cap kit list. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through it and we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Uh, I don't think I have these kits or these caps. I'm sorry. So we'll test the caps, make sure they're okay. And uh, we'll service the neck board, and then we'll service this main board. So let's start by getting our um, well. Let's why don't we start it off with the main board? I was going to start with the neck board because that's kind of easy, but let's go for the harder one first. So we still have some things to do here. Uh, because if you just, I, I've actually seen somebody tear this board apart by improperly trying to get it off the plastic. So we got to make sure 
we do this correctly and that's just going to start by removing some screws they're phillips head screws they have to be removed on the main board here one on this side one on this side and there will be more i think and let's look up here none on the flyback sometimes the flybacks will have a screw in them that might be no there's one more in the middle for sure so there's one right here in the center now that might be all of them and most of the time you're not going to have issues with this pvm just yet you know we're still at the time when this pvm should be good should be good still like you don't have to worry too much about caps usually with the l series just just yet because they're kind of the mid 2000s we need to get this ground cable right here free it's like always something here Whoop. okay there we go so we can get let's get this out of here now our input board well interesting okay there we go not sure why it didn't want to come with the plastic However, I will tell you, you know, the, the solder the solder that was used in this era kind of concerns me. It's never the capacitors, it's more the solder I'm worried about. Hey, Master Safer. Thanks for coming. Uh, but this is like the back of the input board. Okay, you can see it's a dual side board. There are capacitors in there. Thankfully, that's pretty low heat and... Hopefully those capacitors last a long time, because if you have trouble with them, you literally have to just about remove all the shielding and everything on here to get to them. It's a pain in the neck. It's very difficult. One of the most difficult things you could do. But thankfully these boards are solid. And let's see here. Now oh, there's my screw. I knew that was somewhere. And I believe this board should be ready to come out for the tray. But to be safe, we'll do it slowly. Yeah, it's ready. There we go. If you do things right, it should just come clean off. This is our plastic tray. We can remove this and our input board out of the way also. All right. Thanks again for coming, everybody. If you're coming in late, we are working on a circuit board here for the 14L2. This is the primary circuit board, also known as the G board. It has deflection parts as well as power parts in it. Most of the picture processing and things is done on the other card we saw. There's some things done on this board. I believe. I don't know everything about it, but enough to make me dangerous and to learn how to serve with them. So what we want to do, what we want to do here is we want to find the capacitors on this list and mark them. And then we're going to go in and reflow solder on them. And then we'll remove them. Um, so everything above the bottom four is on our main board now it's not a lot of caps if you look at that that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve it's not a big cap kit and 
So let's go in here and see if we can't find these. 1500 is the ones I'm looking for. Now, if I wanted to save myself some agony, I could probably refer to the service manual and find the capacitors um, in the circuit board maps in the back of the monitor or in the back of the uh, service manual. But instead, we're going to look through it now. There is some audio stuff on this board, too, it looks like. Okay, so we need 1511, we need some 15s. We need 1505, 08, 11, and 14. So here's 08 right here. Is 05 anywhere near that? That's 09. Um, 15, 11, and 15, 14, and 05. Oh my goodness. Holy moly. Check this one out. How terrible is this one? Goodness gracious. This one is 1505. Looks to be right here. Under this heat sink. Down here where my finger is. You can barely see the cap. You see that right there where my fingernails touching. That is the capacitor. Goodness. Okay. 1505. We found it. So we've got 05 and 08 located. 11 and 14. 15, 11, and 15, 14. Hmm. I've got a bad feeling they're going to be in the same. There's two capacitors under there. They are not the right value, though. That's a good thing. I don't want to change those if I don't have to. Huh, well, let's see. 1511, right here. These are all over the place. See that? There's 1511. Hey, thank you, SK Nostalgia. I have two Sony Trinitron 27 inches CRTs. I rec recapped the first. Good job. Those are always fun to work on. Sony's are worth working on, they're fun. Even consumer sets most of the time. Really well built. Thank you for the super chat. Okay, so we have to find 1514 now. And if I was a betting man, I'd bet it's near a hot spot. 1517 is the big one. Oh, where are you? 1513, that's not one. This is, this is, okay, not what the one we're looking for is 1514. And then we can look at some other ones, but I'd really like to find 1514. Gosh, there's some over here. These are 35s in this area. Wow. 650s. All right, well, let's see what we've got. We have to be able to find some of these. 3508 is this big one. Okay, that's on our list. 3510 is right there. That's on our list. Um, 1576-1553. 15, Here's 1553 and 1576 right there. Good, we found those. Oh man, thanks again, SK Nostalgia. Yeah, nothing is worse than recapping those duos. Really, anything that has SMD components that are bad that leak are awful, and those have lots of them. Very bad experience. Thank you again for the super chat. Um, I'm still looking for 1514 on this board, but I found a lot of others. And now we can find maybe these 600s to 606 and 624. 
um, if I look again, I'm trying to look like around the heat sinks mostly, but also they should be noticeably big capacitors. 611, 606, 606, 624. Here's 606 right here. So they're all over. 619, don't need that. 606 was the one I just got. 624 up here. 624, 538 and 540. Well, here's 540. And 1513. Gosh, I'm still looking for 1514. I may have to pull out the manual to find that one. Um, 540. We got it. We need 538. So 540's here. 543, 31, 39. So they're all over. Like, you would think this would be 38, but it's not. It's somewhere else. Um, these are not it. 645, 615. Let's see, what are these over here? 655, 656, 646, 634, 619. Goodness gracious. Six, what is this? Okay, we're looking for... 538. Where are you, 538? Those are all 600s, 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 600s. Don't need the 600s. This is like a power block right up here. 600 probably is power cap. Mostly. And I'm not seeing those other ones. Like, not at all. We might just start removing them and maybe we'll run into the part. 530. No, it seems we already got those. It's 546, 538. And 530. I've already got 538s down here. All right, everybody. Maybe this one's not. 1514. Cool. That one actually is not marked correctly. It's on this other side. It says 1514. So that is the one. Cool. We found that one. Just 538, and it's a 25 volt 100 microfarad cap. Mm -mm -mm. There's 539, and it's a 25 volt 100. I do not see 538. We'll go through all of them. Just to make sure these are 15s. Let's see, they're not 15s. 15s. 645, 644, 35s. These are 35s over here. There are a couple of those. 600s up in here. Sorry, my mic's touching my shoulder. Here we go. My microphone was over there, probably touching against my shoulder. If it was clipping or anything, I apologize. Here we go. We fixed it. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing that one 538 at all. So hopefully we come across it. Or we'll just change 539 and maybe it was a miss. Maybe it was a misprint. Hey, Icky Levy William. Hey, Ray Cerrone. Yeah, there's a really weird, like, no sequencing on this one. Icky Lovely William. Good luck today. If you two are working on a Trinitron. So, what I'm going to do. <coughs> excuse me. What I'm going to do is we're going to reflow some solder on here. Um, 
on 11 of them. And we'll reflow some solder. Let me get the solder. And I need to maybe start by giving a little bit more of a bird's eye view on this point. I don't hit your camera. There we go. Let's start up here at this top one. And we can double check that we got the right parts. 624, which is his top capacitor here. Oh, yeah. And this is just going to make it so much easier when we go in and try to remove the caps on this board. It also gives us a chance to really... Uh, maintain or properly maintain this board by going in here and refilling solder in a couple spots that look bad but at the same time like when we reflow solder on the points before we pull the caps it gives the board a good chance of not becoming damaged thank you SNK Nostalgia for the $2 super chat inspired to f you're inspired to fix your Toshiba 1080i 480p CRT now Wow. Yeah, you should fix it. That's crazy. Hey, Demo Kirby. Good to see you. Yeah, I saw your arcade project. Seems like it's coming along well. That's good. Those are always fun. So I see some spots, um, as I said, that just have really poor solder. Looking. I mean, this is again uh, preventative. So if I see some spots, I don't want to go through and reflow the entire board really, but I will do some spots if it looks like they need it while I'm sitting here. Okay, that's our first one. We're going to kind of work our way through this area first. So the next one is. 606, right? Yes, C606, which should be in this area. I think this is it. Right here. So we'll just reflow some solder on that one. And see, this is a good example too. Check out, I'll show you in a second if it can get a close view of it. It'll be nice. We'll see. So this one, if we get real close in there, um, let me show you right here where my finger is. If you can still see it, yeah, that looks pretty good. There's a resistor right in between the points there that is su su super tiny surface mount resistor. And that's just another reason you got to be super careful working on these. Because if you knock something like that off, you will have a lot of trouble. And those are sometimes connected to the legs of the capacitors. So those are two. Uh, nothing over in this area. Nothing in this area. We do have the one by the heat sink. So let's get this one. Um, 1505, right? 1505, yeah. So, 1505 is over here. Just follow the soldering iron. It's getting you close. There we go. And, sorry, if I had like some really awesome tech and I could get you even closer in there, I would. But we are limited. Okay. Thankfully, the camera doesn't. Uh, I, it's a cheap camera. I mean, not cheap. It's like I think it was over a hundred bucks. But whenever I bought it, but it uh, it seems to do well. At least, at least me pulling it in and out like that, it doesn't mess it up. Picture doesn't get messed up. That, there's a lot of cameras that struggle with weird things. Okay, that's another one. That's our capacitor that's hidden under here. 
Thanks again, SK Nostalgia, for the $2 super chat. Solder Works resurrected a Last Blade Neo Geo cart. That's great. Yeah. Soldering, reflowing solder. This can be very important. Excellent job. Thank you for the super chat again. And next we'll look at, so we've got this one. Um, there's one up here. We will reflow it. And then we can do this side, which is the rest of the capacitors. So over here, we're looking at 1511, which is this one down here. So let's go ahead and solder it. Now, when I get to the neck board, I'm going to resolder a lot of things like the CRT socket. We'll resolder it and the transistors, the resistors, things like that. There's a couple things on there we will absolutely be uh, for sure reflowing solder on. All right, that's our uh, caps on this side. Now, the rest of them are down on this end of the board. So we've got two over here, two here, three here. Is that right? Two, four, seven, and yeah, four or five on the other side. Okay. So we just need to do, first off, the two on this end. We've got 1511. Well, that's the one I already did, 1511. Okay. That's the 540 right here. Gosh, I can hear. I can hear the little pug. Hey, Tony, thanks for the super chat. $1.99, just wanted to drop in and say hi. Thank you, Tony. Good to see you. Tony Escobar, I appreciate the super chat. Uh, we're just working on a 14L2 today. Hope you're doing well. And that covers those two capacitors. So now we can move on to this one. 1508, 1576. 1508. All right. There we go some solder on that one and 1576 is pretty close by there's 75 70 68 uh, which way are we looking up at the top of course it's the one up here right this one this is about as like new tech as i can get for working on stuff. Once it gets past this era, I started getting too many components on the surface mount that are small. Things are prob problems are probably more related on newer stuff to design or issues with like heat build up on ICs and custom chips. There's a lot of things like that in the newer CRTs, the last era that can be troublesome because you can't source replacements you can source replacements a lot of the analog monitors and all their parts but after that it got a little bit more difficult all right we've got three more over here so it's one two three four three more so we've got those two 3508 and 3510 3508s right here.
I wonder if they were trying to use lead. I mean, this this solder's not great either. It's like I said, it's what's probably going to ultimately be the trouble with this generation. All right. It says 3510 right there. Why is it say... Oh, there it is. Okay. I thought it didn't say it. It's right here. Right under my nose. There we go. All right. I think we have one more to reflow. Hey, thanks for the big super chat, SK Nostalgia. Thank you for showing me how to keep up PVM CRTs and many more CRTs. Well, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. That's what. That's what I hope to be able to do is help people keep their stuff alive that a lot of people don't want to do. And it's hard to get, no matter where you are in the world, to get somebody to work on it. Unless you happen to live in the same area as myself or like the four other people that do this normally. If you're, Unless you're in our area, you have a hard time finding good places to do this and the good thing about this whole system with YouTube and stuff is that I can you know archive videos like this and hey if one day you decide you want to try to get involved in trying to restore something this video will always be here to help people find their way that was our last capacitor to reflow so we're going to get Mississippi. That's cool. That's it's not too far. Not too close, but not too far. I'm in Virginia. We used to go through Mississippi. Or I've been through Mississippi a few times. My way to Louisiana, too. My family there. All right. We're going to start removing capacitors here. Okay. This is one of them. 540. I've got to plug up my V solderer now. So we're going to go ahead and plug up. Go ahead and plug up the. Great. Sounds clogged. Anybody who tuned into the last. Oh, so how much fun we had with the Hacko FR301. I'm going to heat it up here. Take a second to take a break. Actually, guys, I will be back in one minute. I think Brutus needs to go to the restroom. So as that heats up, I will turn on some music. And um, I will be right back. And we'll get this board and all these caps desoldered.
right, all right, all right. Thank you. Thank you for waiting there for a second. Brutus definitely had to go to the bathroom, and I can't. Can't just make him wait it out. I should have grabbed a little snack. But yeah, Brutus is... Uh, for those of you that don't know, Brutus is 15 years old. So, he <laughs> yeah. can't... Can't hold his... Can't hold his stuff forever. Now, let's see. That sounds heated up now, thankfully. Now I needed to turn it back down. Yeah, he definitely can't wait. And I'll be cleaning up a big mess if I just let him sit there and ignore him. And since he's gotten old, he'll do like weird stuff like he'll, uh, if he does go to the bathroom now, for some reason in the house, it's like, usually in the, uh, it's usually in the, his bed, and it's almost like he's throwing a tantrum, and, and that's the way he does it, because he doesn't have anywhere else to sit, because, but his bed, so if, if he gets angry, he'll just go pee in his bed, and then he's like, well, you gotta clean my bed, and now I don't have anything to sit in. And then he just paces around the house and drives you crazy. Alright. First cap is out. And, um... Let's move on to cap number two. Put him over here. My handy little tray. I will be moving... We'll be moving this here circuit board and camera around a lot just to try to Give you a better view if I can. Uh, this is one we just removed right there. 540 looks clean. See that good clean contacts right there. That's what you're looking for. And then we're gonna get this one right here now. Next, just gonna have to make sure I don't hit the camera lens and catch it on fire. 1511. Just giving it the old wiggle. Oof, that one did not do so well. I'm trying to bend the leg a little bit. That did good. That bit bent really nicely. Maybe I can get it without adding more solder. There we go. Good doggy. Popping right out. How's that for chicken tooth? That's the closest we're getting to a chicken tooth right here. 160 volts, 4.7 microfarads. And one down. One other one down. Now this is a... Uh, yeah, that hole doesn't look very good, so I'm actually going to have to reflow the solder on it anyway. I tried to avoid it, and it didn't matter. Some of these... It's a negative end, which is typical. It's always a big ground plate. Now it's nice and clean. Sorry. No, that's a further out view. There we go, right there. Up here are the two we've removed so far. And let's go. Right here. Remove this one. This one's going to be tricky. I can already tell. OK, 
Okay, we got one leg out on this one. And uh, we're going to have to reflow solder on the negative lead, of course. And hopefully get us good thing to grab, grab a hold of. Hold of. I keep missing. Grab the wrong capacitor. <laughs> Thanks again, SK Nostalgia. Tearing it up today. Yeah, we don't need a glue gun. We got we don't need no stinking glue guns. We've got our <laughs> FR to deal with. Now this one is being a fun one, right? Sometimes you just gotta keep on keeping on. Like uh, if I could just get the leg loose, then maybe I could just pull this out. I don't want to ruin anything. But at the same time... Oh. Did get to budge some. Let's see what the top looks like. Gosh, it's a stubborn one. That's for sure. Sometimes... Might just have to get up here up top. I'm sure the view's not very good for this one, but oh, this guy is first our first troublesome pastor right here. It's always the negative plates on the L boards. So. Let's just reflow the solder on the negative lead again. All right, there we go. So just heating it up, I was able to get the leg of the capacitor out. Thank goodness. We just need to move all the solder now. Problem is this one's gonna be real fun to deal with. See that if you look at this side, let me show you. Here's the issue. Alright. And I'm I'm trying to maintain like and not just you know rush through this. I want you to see this in case you come across something like this. You don't have to worry if it takes multiple times to do it because it's common. Like this big area that looks solid is all ground plate and that's the problem the heat's dissipating up top before before it gets hot enough to heat up the solder that's on the top of the board so you have to do a game of hopefully getting it hot enough to get it out Of course, that doesn't sound good, so it's not like... It's not really wanting to cooperate at in the slightest today. Nope. I mean, I'm just going to have to keep redoing it. Sorry, everybody. Just going to have to keep redoing it. If you left for a little bit, you probably missed me just working on one negative lead here for 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm going to just remain calm, you know? Because getting, getting upset is not going to do anything. Whoa. Let it get nice and hot. Oh my gosh. Still not. I don't think it did it. Oh. Yes. Okay. We got it. Like, can you see it? Right there. We actually got the solder out. 
Hey, Grail, thanks for the $10 super chat. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Got to get back to work, but wanted to shoot you a super chat and say thank you for all the cool stuff you share with the community. Hey, thanks a lot. I'm glad you appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate the super chat. Hey, Belmont, welcome. Welcome on your lunch break. We're just working on a 14L2 here. Got the main board out, pulling caps. And um, of course, just like anything you try to do on live television, you get problems, right? <laughs> So it's always best to just take your time, remain patient. You'll eventually get them out, just like we got. We just eventually got that out. It's clean. We didn't damage anything, and everything's good. And we can move on now to the uh, next capacitor, which is a big one up here, 1576. And then we have these three. So even though it's taking time, it's good practice. You know, we're getting, we're getting good experience so now since we know how bad the negative lines are we're going to start on the positive leg and and make sure we clear that one off first which we have you can just see how much longer it takes to heat up too wiggle Man, this is like, <laughs> folks, it's not going to be easy on us. It's not at all going to be easy on us. And that's okay. This is, hey, this is why you have to have a the art of being able to work on this stuff, you know? You can't, just nobody can work on it. You have to know the tricks. You have to know to be able to do that for some reason. Wonderful. And we got all our solder through the hole right there. So that's good. Nothing, no damage right here. Try to get in there. Oh yeah, look at that. I can hopefully, well, it's too much light. Let me see if I can get that to focus at all. Let's see, right here. See, we got it out cleanly. Right there. Right there. Very nice. Okay. Moving on. You got to think about this. This is why on a board like this, you're not going to re... You'd have to be nuts to... Or, or really dedicated to like recap the entire thing. That's why we're relying right now for this era. We are relying on these good parts and cap kits uh, to subsidize the parts that are going bad. And hopefully we can get a couple more decades of use out of this before we have to go in and start really recapping every board on this one. Okay. I mean, see what I'm doing is I'm heating up the solder, but I can tell it doesn't matter because the leg of the capacitors not moving. Oh, there it is. Finally moves, but it doesn't like move and it loses a bunch of its heat. It's a super, super, super punk move. Ugh. Let's see, it's making me try to slip my fingers. It's like, oh, you're going to slip and you're going to ruin this board is what I want you to do. Unreal. I hate doing it. I hate doing it that way. I absolutely despise doing it that way. Did we get through that one? We gotta check the light. No, we didn't. <laughs> oh, thanks for the super chat again, SK Nostalgia. Buy more CRTs. That's what you do, huh? Well, I do that too, but 
<laughs> and then I try to fix the ones I buy and restore them. But good one. Oh, goodness. Let's just try to do that. Oh, you're being so cool to me. Cool or cruel? What am I trying to say here? Cruel to be kind? You gotta be cruel to be kind? This is cruelty. This is, I think this is what happens kind of when there's a disconnect between, between like engineering a problem and the practicality of repairing that problem. Because you really, these ground plates, I mean, come on. They gotta be that obnoxiously big. I still can't get that. I can't believe it. I cannot get that, um, I can't get that hot enough. I can't get it hot enough. Unreal. Look at that, I had to stick it up to the top hole to get through. And we did it. We got through enough, absolutely. Good. <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah, this is... Ugh. Thankfully, just a few capacitors. Just a few. Just a few to go. So we've got these two right here, hopefully. It's positive. <laughs> Positive leg comes out easy peasy, right? Because it's just a small little, uh, small little lead there and small little, that's not the right one, right above it. Trace. So those, those are the two. Let's see, goodness. It doesn't really matter. It seems like every single one of them. If we had one come out like a normal capacitor would, I don't think we've had one single capacitor just cleanly come out. Nope, this one's not going to either. It's got a big old clump of solder attached to its top. Mm. Uh, this is why this job, like, if you get this job done, you get half the parts, but the same bill for hours as you would for a uh, M series or, <laughs> you know, a 54, 53, something like that, because. Those you can get the caps in and out like no no problem. As far as these guys are concerned, you're wasting your time working overtime. There we go. We got that one. Enough. Enough. I mean... It still won't come all the way clean. It still will not come all the way clean. That is it just ugh, makes me want to smack somebody with that kind of board design. Doesn't dissipate dissipate heat that or dissipate heat too, dissipates heat too well. Too well is the problem. It's overly designed well instead of <laughs> getting frustrated for being designed too good. 15, 14 over here. Oh. Oh, you, you little devil, you. 15, 14. It's like a crusty old... Mm. It looks like, it looks like a crusty old sock that you'd find under, like, a teenage boy's bedroom under his bed and you'd be totally 
grossed out by it. That's about what this solder looks like. Not my love sock. Come on, get your love sock out my circuit board, dude. I don't know what I'm going to do, but that one that's attached to the heatsink, that one's never going to want to come out. I'm going to do that one last so I can scream bloody murder. Hey, thanks again, SK Nostalgia, for another $2 super chat there. It says, my local electronics part store is gone. Look at that. This had the stupid... It's almost gone, yeah. I'm sure it is. This had the stupid leg come out of the capacitor. So it's so hot, it dissipates heat so well, it can't even, the damn capacitor can't handle it. The capacitors can't handle it, but the damn board will never burn. Could survive a fucking fire. Sorry about that language. I'm trying not to get heated too much. That's it. My word. There we go. Goodness gracious. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Oh, what a surprise. You got a crusty old butt up on the top side, too. Oh yeah, you like that, don't you? Oh, you don't like that. How? Ooh. How? How? How do you not? How is that? Like, I don't understand the physical, chemical, compens... Where every time I get a PVM on stream, it's gotta be... The most difficult job. There we go. <laughs> Let's trick a blowtorch to this jerk. Huh? Flamethrower. I'll put a flamethrower to this thing and see if that fixes the geometry. We've got three. Count them, three capacitors left. Hmm. Since we're going to save our climax for the end, we're going to go with these other two capacitors that are up here. We have this one. Should be easy. This one should be easy, but you know. You know. That's our solder board. Okay. Well, this is the time where Steve gets to clean. Steve gets to clean the FR301 because it's smoking and it's decided it doesn't want to work anymore. And that means that not only is the solder bad on the 14L2 circuit board, but when it flies into my solder sucker, it proceeds to turn into even bigger crap than, as it, than it started. So then you get whole issue where the desoldering tool will not suck literally but it sucks figuratively then when it doesn't suck it sucks for not sucking so I mean, it's not even, it's got itself clogged up like such a little thing. That's not even that many caps. I'm not really understanding this, this, this solder sucker is, uh, like every, every like 15 caps now it's, it's clogging itself. That's not, that's not effective. 
it's definitely not effective and that's not good Woo, smoke it how about that Woo! look at that stupid thing yeah it definitely fell on the ground and rolled around in the carpet per second not all there's just a industrial rug under here it's not like a carpet gosh what a piece of trash okay we'll set that down for a second i'm gonna have to get this part to work see you belmont thanks for stopping by on your lunch break now it's sucking there we go. Oh, it's sucking all right. It's sucking. <laughs> it's definitely sucking. And that. I'm going to let this get nice and hot again. Take a little second to relax because it's definitely... <clears throat> like test these are the patience testers of pvms again i think we've said that a lot today here we go Sucking, all right. But I'd like to try to burn that circuit board that time. Well, we got it in and out clean somehow. That's good. All right. Back in business. One more here, and then we got to get our hard one out. We're going to have to bust out the hard one. I'm not sure what Cole's up there barking at. My dogs, they just love to bark at old people. And children. Like, what is up with that nonsense? The two least threatening things. Oh, 14L2. I really despise you in the way the way you do the things you do those little things you do you know I just don't understand you I just don't I just don't understand the ultimate version of operation here the kids board game we got that one out finally and the holes clean right there there's the capacitor no worries my father made lead bullets way back nice SNK lead bullets <laughs> lead baby Hear him up there. I'm sure you can hear him barking in the background. All right. Where's... Oh, we still... I didn't grab this one, actually. I forgot one more up here. Oh, yeah. It was one that I had only gotten one leg out of. I forgot about the second leg up here on this. And, of course... Well, of course you don't want to come right out. You just... Well, you got to hang on for your dear life there, Sally, and... Don't let anybody tell you different, okay? 
Don't let anybody tell you that you you should change. You be you and Why should anybody want a new fresh capacitor in here? See? You should just deal with the old one. Alright. You're out. You're out, Mr. Rubicon. You're out of the picture. But the pain the pain remains because I can see a big plate. Come on, baby. Get out of there. Get out of that hole. And no. And no. All right. There we go. All right, everybody. Last capacitor here. Dogs do need to come help me. All right, guys, we're going to get through all these caps out, and then that's pretty much probably going to be it. I'll, I'll stop for a minute after that and talk because I have a 2 o'clock deadline today, and we're getting, we're getting awfully close to it. There we go. This one actually came out easy. Thank goodness. The hardest one, right? It's like the hardest for last sometimes. And this one came out good. Excellent. Excellent. 538. I still never found C538. So I'm not sure. If it's just me, or if it's marked wrong, or if it's C-539 that I need to take out because there is no C-538. Because I don't see a C-530. Oh, wait. I do see a C-538. Isn't that one up here? I thought it was C-530, but it's C-538, I bet. 25 volt 100. Yep, yep. This is our last one. I actually did find the very last one. And we're fortunate because it's actually at the top of the board here, so right up here. So it should be, it shouldn't be too, yes, that's the right one. It shouldn't be too hard to get out. Of course, it has a huge, absolutely ginormous um, brown plate right here. It's on the edge. Which makes it infinitely more heat tolerant. Like, I, I mean, I couldn't even get the leg to wiggle that time doing that. But if I do it on this, look how quick the wiggle is on this positive leg. Uh. That was a piece of cake. No way. Sensei, you're not going to come out of there that easy, are you? Oh, you have a rep reputation to uphold. Look at you. You just gave right up. <laughs> All right. Well, that is a good thing, actually. We were able to find every one of the caps on this board that's in the cap list. And now I'll be able to go in and change them. And install some new ones. So, see how much time we got? We got about 15 minutes. I'll continue to work. Maybe I can... Uh, get oh, didn't want to do that what I did earlier maybe I can get um, some of these caps put in uh, 
All right. Hang in there, folks. Hang in there with me. We'll turn our solder sucker off. Get it out of the way. Install a couple of these fresh caps. How about we start with the hardest? So we remove the hardest the last. I think that's 1505. It's a 50 volt 100. Here's our replacement. 1505. Yes. Longer. This oh man. Just gotta squeeze it down in there, you know. Okay. See our legs there. There we go. There we go, baby. We're going to do the positive leg again because, again, it will be better to start on that leg since we know the negative legs always need more heat. We can trim these down. Oh, man. Thank you again. SNK Nostalgia for another $5 super chat. Out of nowhere, my first mod was a region switch on the Neo Geo C CD. 12 years old in 96. That's awesome. I wish I even knew what the Neo C Geo CD was in 96. I had no concept of the Neo Geo CD when I was a kid, unfortunately. Just never had seen it. I do remember seeing Neo Geo, of course, arcades and AES systems sometimes. I mean, that even that itself was an extreme rarity. It might be like one set up at the uh, nice high-end video game store in like the entire area. All right. C1505, our hardest one, is installed. That's great. 1514 over here, let's get that one in. That's a 250, 4.7. And 1511 is a 250, 4.7, which is on the other side. So let's just go ahead and do both of those. 1511 is down here. Actually, let's use our tool. Well, I thought I had that tool ready. There it is. <coughs> Pardon me. So we're going to use our little capacitor leg bender tool and clip our legs down with it. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us this cool little shape. See that? See our parts legs, how it's got like a, see that shape now? And that way... I'm going to take this and stick it down in here. Make sure it's oriented the right way. And you just like sit it like that and it's it's in there. You can push it down further if you want or just leave it like that. And now we will solder it on in. I'm breaking the rules. I'm going negative lead first this time. Fifteen eleven. There we go. See, and it sits above the board just like all the others do, and how it originally did. And we'll say it's a little bent. Okay, perfect. Same thing. We'll do it again here. We'll do it again here, right here. 
Uh, make sure it's the right way. Same thing. Flip it around. Cut the other leg. And there we go. Now we have our cool legs uh, for 15, 11, now 15, 14 up here. Just gonna make sure you got it oriented the right direction. Sorry, I had to pull it out of the camera view for a second. This one's a little difficult for my fingers to fit down in. I have to get a little bit help here from Mr. Mr. Klein's pliers here. If I can do it, if I can do it. I probably should have left these legs longer because... Sorry, I'm going to move the microphone. I probably should have left these legs longer so that they would easily fit in these holes. There we go. There we go. Make sure that's the right orientation. It is. <laughs> Don't use glue, the only rule. Now I'll show you the only time you can use glue and get away with it is if um, if the glue is just there to secure wiring or something. Not, not as actually anything. Should be completely removable too. Like... This, for example, isn't bad, but it's even RTV. Hey, Edward. There we go. <laughs> yeah, if you've been watching, I just got to use it. I just showed everybody. I used it a couple times there. It's great. Yeah, Edward turned me on to the uh, pliers or clips, whatever you want to call them. Where you bend that bends the legs. I think it's fun and it's great for certain applications. And then there's some applications where I still decide to leave the legs on and do it the old fashioned way. But it's definitely helpful. I like it. I like the way it all looks and works. So yeah, I've been enjoying it. All right, guys. Maybe one more capacitor. One more. You got 1511, 1514, and 1505 changed. We got 1511, 1514, and 1505. How about we go for 25220? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, 1508. Which one was 1508? Is right here in the middle of the board. I'm going to use. Since this is a bigger capacitor, I'm going to stick this one straight in the board right here and not use the not use the little clip or the not use the tool on this one, Edward. We're going for just the um, I want to make sure we have that down against the board and I don't know sometimes it, it depends on the scenario a lot of times uno mas <laughs> oh thank you SK nostalgia huge $20 super chat man you're too cool too kind whoa let's see Ooh, that one went in there good. There we go. We've got that one in. Right there. You know, wait. Who's this the top four? Let's see. I want to do number 540 or 50 volt 100 because it's right on the edge. Two. Oh, there we go. Let's do this one over here. 
top. Just like a mad scramble to see how many of these I can do in the next two minutes. I just this <laughs> I got one more. Maybe one, one more. All right, let's get up here. Let's get in there. Goodness gracious, it's just too... Oh. Just need so much heat to get that thing going. That is crazy. Crazy. How much heat you got to put on that negative lead there. All right. There we go. What are we up to? Two o'clock yet? 156. We still got two more minutes. Three more minutes. Let's keep going. All right. So that's 540. Take it off the list of ones we need to do. Fifteen seventy six is right here. That's another fifty volt one hundred. If I had a better board where I could put in more caps at once and not really do it like this, I would definitely use the other tool that I have uh, for the capacitors because it's just easier and you can do more at once. However, with this board and how just finicky it is, I'm going to be using both methods. Those negative legs are just... Whew. Begging for, begging for like 900 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit on the iron, and I'm not going above 750. Sorry, it's not gonna do it. And then the positive legs, like, yo, I'm hot, I'm hot, I'm ready. Lay off. Mm. All right, there we go. Fifteen seventy six is on and done. Fifteen fifty three. Man, we're going to get. Pretty close. 1553 right here. You can definitely kill stuff at too much heat. Yeah, if you put SK nostalgia, if you put too much heat on something, you can definitely ruin it. All right, here we are up top. Up top. Here we go. Can trim this one. Tip clean. There we go. Fifteen. Well, let's try to see if we can't get that to push down a little bit more. Looks like it's 
sticking out from the board too high. All right, excellent. Actually, did get it to come down. All right, cool. Excellent. There we go. No troubles, no troubles. 1553. We've got plenty of room for our cable to connect in there too. So another one off the list. Now we are going to get the two 3000 series. 3508 is a big one. And then 3510 is what? 25 volt 100. So not so big. Let's get these two out of the way. Get them done. This one right here. And why not? Let's let's go for two this time. Let's see if we can get it done. Right here. That's what we're doing. And again, I'm going to start on the positive leg legs. There we go. Now we can trim them. Blow the solder on them one more time. So awesome. There we go. Excellent. There we go. All right. Thanks, B. Sanchez. Thanks for coming and hanging out. See you later. I don't think I'll have time, obviously, to finish this uh, whole kit today. We'll, we'll be lucky to get through what we've done so far. Actually, 538. Did I already change it? Nope. 538's up top. 25 volt 100. We're actually going to get through uh installing the cap kit but that's probably going to be it but i'm moving at a good pace now this is better than the way we started and something we could definitely do is come in and finish up servicing on the neck board Uh, if we come up looking at the neck board, then we can get the neck board serviced and get the, uh, like caliber, we can get it back together and test it and run through some of the service menu for calibration stuff and tests, which is nice. So if... If you're into that thing, we can do that on the next stream. I'll just come back and we'll get back to work on it till we're all the way done with it. Kind of the way we did with the 844Q. Because I don't really plan to do a full, probably, RetroTech episode on um, this job. Probably not. But it's more appropriate for streaming, I feel like. Hey, thank you, SK Nostalgia. You're pretty good too. He says I'm pretty good. All right, we got two more. I can't believe it. Two more. They are 
over here in the 600 block, which is a power block, 606 and 624. 606 is a 50 volt 100. And 60, 624 is a 50 volt 220. 624 is outside. That's, that's going to be fine. I'm going to stick this one in here, 606. And the big one up here, 624. The big one right there. Oops. Get the legs bent up so it doesn't fall out when we flip it over. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Last one. Right here. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. I'm going to go through here and, well, I'll leave it this way. I just want to make sure that every cap I installed is the right direction. So now I'll take a marker and make sure by tacking it, checking that every one that I changed is the right direction. One, two, three, four. One's right. That's right. One under here. All right. We are, I mean, that's awesome. Great stuff, everybody. This one, this one. Change one over here. This one, this one. I believe that's it in this one let's let's count them one two sorry for the terrible camera angle of that segment <laughs> this whole segment let me get it out a little bit more okay we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, and then 12 up here for 538. They're all the right direction. We're not missing any capacitors in the kit list, so that's good. And that means this board's done uh, as far as servicing, but we still kind of need to uh, clean it a little bit before put it back it needs to be clean and then i'll um do so i'll clean it and get rid of all the flux residue and all the dust and then use the air compressor blow it off and then i'll put it back together with the um actual input board but that's all i'll do off camera then i'll save i'll save everything for um tomorrow's stream where i will 
service our neck board, which is right here, because we still need to do that. We need to service this neck board. That's going to take probably 20, 30 minutes. And then we'll fire it up and make sure everything's good. Okay. I did a little bit over time here. I went 10 minutes longer than I should have. So I'm going to get in trouble if I don't get off now. <laughs> hey, thank you everybody for showing up today and being in this uh, fun uh, stream. Thank you very much, SK Nostalgia, for blowing up the super chats. That's awesome. I appreciate you coming back this week and doing that. If you guys want to come back, I will be doing the same time tomorrow. I'll be finishing this job up. We'll do this neck board, and then we'll get this tested. I promise. I think everything's going to be fine on it. But uh, that'll do it for today's stream. And I uh, thank you for watching. If you want to watch the playback, you can definitely watch that. It'll be uploaded to the channel. And... Uh,